So this is a quick recap on using the binomial probability function to be able to calculate probabilities. So I've just written down a real sort of simple example here. Say, for example, I was going to pick from these four post-it notes at random. So completely at random. I don't know what position they're in. I'm just going to take 10 of them. OK, and of course, I could end up with any arrangement of colours. And it says here, find the probability that I get three pink. Now, this is exactly the type of problem we can work out using the binomial probability function. Because on your book, in page 187, it says you can use the binomial distribution if there are a fixed number of trials n. Well, here n is 10. I'm going to take 10 post-its. So I'm doing something 10 times. Each trial is a success or a failure. Well, I'm interested in picking pink here. So pink is success. And anything that isn't pink is a failure. The trials are independent. The colour I pick on one trial is not going to affect what comes up next. And the probability of success is the same in each trial. So P, the probability of success is the same in each trial. Well, yes, we would say here for each trial, the probability of getting pink is one quarter that's not going to change now in your book on page 188 there's a formula written i don't like the way it's written there and it's not written like that on your exam sheet and that goes for year one and year two exams so it's written slightly differently there and the way it's written there i've put it on this post-it so the way it's written on your exam sheet, it says if X can be modelled using the binomial distribution, and that's what this part means. So if X can be modelled using a binomial distribution where there's N number of trials and P is the probability of success, then this is the formula we can use. OK, so. For the amount of successes, this is what we can use. So hopefully this is just a bit of a reminder. So say, for example, here, we want to work out the probability that we get three pink. OK, let's think about what the values of these letters are then. So we're doing uh, 10 trials here. So N is 10. The probability of success, the probability that I get pink, is one quarter. Now, Q is the probability of failure, because either I get pink or I don't. It doesn't matter what other colour I get, only whether I get pink or not. There's a reminder here, and this is on your formula booklet, but Q is one minus P, because if P is a quarter, then Q would have to be three quarters because it will either be success or failure. And we want to find out the probability of getting three successes. So R, the number of successes, is three. If you know those four values, then you will be able to put them into your formula. OK. Because now what we can go through and say, right, the probability that we get three successes is N choose R. So 10 choose 3. Remember, that came up when we did binomial expansion. It's the amount of ways we could get three pink here from 10 post-its in this context times p to the power of r. So a quarter to the power of three. We get three pinks. Times q, which will be three quarters to the power of n minus r. So that's 10 take away three. So that's seven. That's our seven failures. 
Now, if you need a reminder on your calculator, the way that we put in n choose r is that we use shift divide. So 10 shift divide three. So that will give you your 10 choose three. And then we can put in the rest of our values. You don't need brackets here, but just do it carefully. Make sure it's a quarter to the power of three and not just a one on top to the power of three. So what do we get? We get our answer here on our calculator and we would normally write this to three significant figures unless we're asked otherwise. So 0.250.